Just to make sure that you guys are seeing the screen in front. Yes, we see it. Excellent. So uh, I guess we are right on time. And we should start. Thank you very much for attending. And thank you, OpenSUSE and LibreOffice, for having me. Um, I'm going to be talking about new health and more specifically uh, later on the uh, talk on the mobile application and desktop application for the personal health record uh, that will work on Libre phones and KDE desktops. So going through the agenda, we'll talk a bit about uh, the new health history. Then we'll get into the ecosystem components. We'll dive into uh, specific on my new health and why this was created. Uh, a bit of uh, the technical infrastructure. And finally, if we have time, we'll go for some questions and answers. Just a bit about me. Um, I'm a computer scientist and a physician by training. And uh, my specialty is into uh, genomics and medical genetics. And into the activism, I, I, I love social medicine, uh, uh, animal rights, and of course, uh, libre software. You'll see that I don't really talk much about open source, but uh, at the end, we all know what we're talking about. And uh, it's fine with me. People like to say open source, free software. I like to call it libre software. So. Um, it's it's what it probably gets more into uh, freedom and the, and the philosophy of 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 uh, our project. And you can reach me uh, there, falcon at gnuhealth.org. Anytime that you want, just drop me an email. Well, uh, new health project starts. Oh, Lubos is saying. Maybe it's an it's... issue on my side, but I still see slides from Richard. No, no, no. Uh, I can I can see Luis' uh, slides. Okay, uh, try to try to click uh, uh, click uh, directly on uh, Luis' icon. You are still uh, locking the focus on uh, Richard. Good. Thank you. Okay. Cool. So. Um, it's a very brief history of new health in the community. The picture that you're seeing there was the very first project in 2006. That's uh, Santiago del Estero in Argentina. And we were actually going through rural schools and putting GNU Linux uh, desktops on their uh, classrooms. And then I noticed that these kids needed a bit more than just technology. And that's where all this, uh, you know, rural medicine and social medicine uh, concepts uh, came to my mind. And that's where actually we started developing GNU Health. Uh, and um, doing so, we created the GNU Solidario NGO. That's the NGO behind GNU Health. Uh, it's a non-for-profit organization that works globally, and we are focused on social medicine. And social medicine is a very vast uh, topic, okay, um, from primary care to epigenetics. So it's, 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 it's very quite complex uh, stuff. Um, in uh, 2011, Richard Stallman declared New Health an official GNU project. And since then, it has been hosted at GNU Savannah by the uh, Free Software Foundation. And it has many mirrors around the world. We are actually thinking on creating other um, uh, mercurial repositories to uh, host the different ecosystem components that we will see on the presentation, not just having it on one. And um, yeah, we, 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 are, we, are, we pride ourselves to have a 
very nice, friendly international community, people from uh, Germany, Austria, Scotland, Spain, Argentina, United States. I mean, you name it. We, are, we, we have a pretty nice, large community. These are just some examples uh, of, of people using GNU Health around the world, from the Red Cross to uh, hospitals in Argentina or in Cameroon or in India, uh, from small primary care uh, clinics to very large hospitals, like in the case of AIMS in, in, in India, or nationwide implementation, like in uh, uh, Laos or uh, Jamaica. So depending on what you do, you will choose the packages that are needed uh, for your institution, where you are a research institution, where you are a laboratory, or where you are a primary care center. Um, GNU Health usually has the, uh, the solution for to, to fit your needs. Now, um, again, you know, I try to kind of fill the gap between health informatics and social medicine. Uh, because usually what you see around is uh, an over-sophisticated system of health that doesn't really actually meet the needs of the population. So uh, uh, I think that by bringing social medicine, that gap is filled, that, that gap is met, and um, it's actually taking care of over 80% of the uh, issues that uh, create um, diseases come from social uh, determinants of health. Uh, so we needed programs and we needed computing power to actually take care of those, of those issues. As I said before, it's, a, it's a, an official GNU project. Everything and every single component, it's a Libre software. Um, we have the package for OpenSUSE, um, and we, of course, have the, um, uh, the source code at PyPy. It's, uh, most of the code is Python, so uh, you will see the different packages on, on PyPy. But um, yeah, we have some Vue.js uh, code for, for portals. We use Flask, and the documentation is currently on Wikibooks. Um, and we will keep Wikibooks, but um, we will also have our own documentation portal um, that will keep track of every single version that, that, that we have. So, so these are some of the, the uh, operating system databases and um, development environments that, that we use on the uh, GNU Health ecosystem. So these are the main components, okay? So, so, so you have a hospital management information system. You have a, a way of running embedded for, for domiciliary units and, and small centers, and also for laboratories and so on. Many people use the new health embedded uh, solution. Um, you have the limbs to uh, interact with all the uh, hardware in the on the labs, you have the bioinformatics uh, package that deals with uh, genomics and all these natural variants and mutation, uh, cancer research uh, and um, rare diseases and, and all these things related to uh, genetics. And um, one very interesting components. It's what kind of put all of these together that that is the uh, GNU Health Federation, um, specially fitted for, for large nationwide uh, implementations. This is just one of the components. Here you'll see some screenshots from the uh, New Health uh, Hospital Management Information System. Uh, from here you can do from uh, uh, diagnostic imaging uh, to pediatrics, to gynecology, to uh, histopathology, uh, 
uh, you have cameras, uh, you have uh, agendas, and um, uh, you, you pretty much can run a, a, a hospital, okay? You have stock management, you have bed management, you have operating rooms, uh, you have pharmacies, uh, labs, and so on. Um, so it's, it's a pretty large uh, uh, program. Um, but it's 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 quite stable now. It's been running for uh, over ten years now, eleven years now. So um, this is what institutions use the most. Hospitals use the most. This is the hospital management information system. Um, but what takes us today is the uh, what the the, the upcoming. Um, personal health record. So up until now, we have had uh, new health focused on the system of health. That means you deal with, uh, you know, health professionals, health institutions, governments, public health, and so on, which has been very valuable uh, for them to take care of their patients and their people. But we needed or, or i felt the need to give or to empower the person the citizen itself and, and and to make the citizen part of the system of health and to do that you need an application you need a, a desktop application and you need a mobile application right um but i was kind of stuck uh, because i didn't find any device that was libre meaning uh, I didn't feel comfortable comfortable with either Android or iOS uh, in terms of privacy. Um, so I kind of waited to see a, a, the upcoming of a phone that actually ran GNU Linux on it, uh, but, but the code itself was open, right? Um, and that's where PinePhone showed up. And at the same time, I met Aleix Poil from uh, KDE, and he told me, hey, Luis, why don't we you know, do something on, on, on this platform and, and Kirigami and so on? And, and I said, yeah, well, it sounds wonderful. And uh, I started learning um, Kirigami and Qt and uh, QML and all this really neat stuff. And that's what we're doing today, okay? So the idea is you need, or, or we need an, an application that has to be easy for the end user, right? Everybody should be able to install it and, uh, and to run it. Um, but at the same time, it has to be good in privacy, right? You know that uh, that's, that's one of the key ideas of Libre software that, that that respect your privacy, right? Uh, or, or we at least intend to respect your privacy in the coding that we that we put on it, from the operating system to the application level, all all the way on. Um, this is part of the technology that we are using at uh, my new health. It's it's again it's a Python application. We use Qt for Python. Um, used to be called PySci2. Um, uh, Christian is one of the leaders of the PySci2 project, and uh, he's also helping us out on, on, on the application. So we are very excited about it. Um, we use Matplotlib for charting in the same way that we use Matplotlib uh, in the uh, health and, and hospital information management system. That's, that's the good thing about uh, you know, the, the Python libraries that they are reusable. So uh, we, we got used to them and it's, it's a beautiful library. And, 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 and now we, we got to uh, port it to uh, Mike New Health. Uh, Kirigami does a beautiful job uh, because uh, I'm able to run the very same code on the KDE desktop than on my Pine phone. Um, TinyDB, it's um, it's a database system, um, JSON based, 
Um, it's a document-oriented database uh, that fits quite well for, for what we want. Remember that this is this is a one-user DB, right? That this is a, it's a DB that belongs to you, to your laptop, to your desktop, and to your phone. Uh, it's not a multi-user DB. For those, we have another one that we'll see later. And GNUPG basically for um, uh, for uh, encrypting and signing documents, right? So this is what it looks like. These are current screenshots, uh, screenshots from uh, the KDE desktops. Basically, now we are we are. Uh, uh, using the bio, okay? And then you have the cycle, the social, you can upload documents. And, and of course, if you are in, in, a, in a dive straight, if you have an issue, uh, you can call emergency. Uh, remember that we are working on social medicine, right? So there are a lot of things that are important there. So nutrition, it's, it's important. Um, uh, family affection is important. You have a lot of stuff that goes beyond the vital signs, okay? Vital signs are very important, and in fact, we are putting some of them here in these charts, uh, but they are just one part of the picture, right? And um, uh, I, I, I just love it. I mean, Kirigami makes it really, really nice to, to work with, and, and, and the user experience is it's quite, quite good. Um, and as I said, those plots that you see there are, are coming from the matplotlib. Uh, and this is actually a, a, a actual picture that I took uh, from the pine phone, uh, showing pretty much the same, okay, but this time on the, on the, uh, on the mobile device, right? Uh, we are using a KDE Neon, but uh, it should be portable to to any um, uh, operating system that uh, works on on Pine sixty four. Um, and now, I would say that one of the good things about GNU Health ecosystem is that we use we use this concept of federation, meaning. Any of us, whether you are a laboratory, whether you are a person, whether you are an academic institution or a, or a, or a hospital, uh, you are a node. If you want to be part of the federation, you will become a node. And my new health itself, it's a node, meaning that you can say, hey, I want to share specific data or specific set of data uh, for, for example, my vitals, okay, or, or my glucose, my blood glucose levels, uh, and, and you can send that anonymized or you can send it to your health professional, um, and, and that's what makes you part of the system of health, okay? At that moment, at that moment, you are part of the system of health, okay? Um, which which is great. I mean, especially now in this context of the pandemic, you don't have to move from your place and and, and send your your information to your nurse or to your uh, primary care physician, uh, or 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 if you are in travel, you can you can uh, you know click that emergency button and and we'll send that information. Remember, it's much more than just vital and clinical data, what, what you are uh, supposed to put here. So basically, uh, that information will go um, to the GNU Health Information System. Now we are talking of a very, very large database, which is also Postgres. So we said on the phones and on the desktops, if you are running your um, personal um, health record, you're going to have the tiny DB. That's that's your database, okay? That's where you're going to be storing your data and your documents and so on. But if you want to be part of the uh, GNU Health Federation, that information will go straight, it will go through Thalamus, which is 
kind of the message server, the authentication and, and, and message server. And then from there, um, it will go to a very large Postgres document-oriented uh, database. So we are we're using JSON fields, which allowed you to, uh, the Ministry of Health, for, exa for example, to do very good analytics from it. Okay, so hospitals will use transactional uh, relational databases. The system of health or the Ministry of Health are going to be using a more document-oriented DB. Um, this is pretty much what I was saying before. So every person will become a node. Um, you can, you know, update to your health professional your information. The person is in control of what you share. Actually, you cannot share anything if you don't want to. Um, and it will definitely decrease the load on the public health system. Okay. Um, at least that's, that's what I try to uh, achieve. Uh, and then after you have all of that stuff in place, um, this is kind of the, 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 the good stuff that whether you are a research institution or where you are the uh, Ministry of Health, uh, you can start doing really good things in the uh, genomics and uh, medical genetics area. Um, you know, there are so many natural variants that they have unknown clinical significance. You know that there is a mutation, but you don't really know how much that mutation will impact your health. Um, by having these very, very large databases, uh, you will be able to kind of create or see this correlation between genotype and phenotype and, and hopefully, hopefully, um, detect, prevent, detect, and treat better whatever condition it is um, in, in, in the areas of genetics and, and epigenetics, of course. Um, so this is, this is one of the really awesome things that we should be able to do with the Federation. And putting the citizen in place there will actually uh, exponentiate the uh, the good things about it uh, and and of course you will have uh, real time or the possibility of having a real time observatory and 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 reporting in uh, for example in the case of argentina ginu health has been chosen as the observatory for the covid in entre rios um, so you have different health centers and at the moment that you have a disease that is uh, notifiable, whether it's tuberculosis, whether it's Ebola, or whether it is COVID-19, that information will go immediately to the uh, New Health Federation and the Ministry of Health will know the case in real time. And uh, that's, that's key, okay? Uh, you don't have to wait a weekend to know the... Uh, you know, the incidence or the prevalence of any disease. No, you will have that information in real time. So uh, instead of becoming an epidemic, you can cut it short at any moment of the outbreak if you have the, my, my, uh, if you have the GNU Health Federation in place uh, in your province or in your country. So um, what are the stuff that we are doing today? Well, uh, pretty much we are now uh, linking uh, my new health to the federation. That's that's code that is being in place. Uh, you can check the code at the mercurial repository at the genu.org. Uh, and we should have a beta by December. Um, any questions that you might have, you can send it to either to me or to info at newhealth.org or just join the uh, mailing list on the development mailing list. That's probably the best way if you want to develop and help us developing the, uh, whether it's my new health or, or any of the other components of the new health ecosystem. Um, 
to do. Um, I was listening to Richard before. Um, well, packaging is one of the issues always, right? Uh, what What is the best way to package new health, my new health? Should we just do it uh, a pie pie? Should we just create a, a, a Python package and just upload it to pie pie? Or should we have an operating system uh, specific package, whether it's for FreeBSD or for OpenSUSE or whatever. I know Axel, it's already working on something like that. And I see his comments around there. Um, that's fine. That's that's perfectly fine. Um, as in the case of the uh, hospital management information system, um, my goal is to kind of create a generic vanilla uh, distro. Right, uh, something that is valid for any libre operating system, right? So whether you use FreeBSD or OpenBSD or OpenSUSE or Arch Linux or whatever, you should be able to install it uh, in your place with, of course, the, the right documentation in place, right? And then if any of you guys wants to do, as in the case of Axel, um, uh, want to do something on 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 OpenSUSE, have the RPM ready, that's great for me. Um, as I said, you know, in the case of my new health, has to be something that is easy because people has to be able to install it. As a matter of fact, for the Pine phone, uh, it just should come pre-installed. And then if you want to delete it, you can delete it, but it's, it's a way of, of making things easier. Um, connectivity with open hardware devices, and the documentation that is always one of the things and security, right? Uh, those are the things that are in the to-do list. And um, we have two minutes. This is one of the things that we have in Munich. We have an OpenSUSE Leap uh, community server, so people can just log in there and play around with the uh, with the uh, federation or the hospital management information system. And now that we'll have the uh, my new health in place in, in a couple of months, so you will be able to uh, send test data there and, and play with it. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um, any questions will be, I'll be trying to uh, answer. So thank you again for being here. And I did really enjoy the presentation. So, um, Lubos, one thing, does Nuhel have the survey of for new patients? I was just using the web-based server. I mean, no. New general practitioner. So that's the question because this is the first time that I kind of use this interaction with my doctor and it was a basically survey for registration of a new patient, you know, like regular one. And it was quite cool, but he told me that, you know, like he has it for two plus years and I was the first person to ever use it. So that was quite sad, but, um, you know, is something like that part of your suit? So, so you mean a survey for... Exactly. Before you ever start with the doctor, you know, like he wants to get some info about you before he registers you and you kind of fill it and then you can already use this information contain vaccination. So I took my, you know, vaccination document and I kind of copied everything in there and, and diseases, I don't have any, so it was easy to fill. You know, maybe some, if you have gun license or whatever other, you know, do you wear glasses, stuff like that. And he found it useful, but again, like nobody was really using it. But still, if people would, it saves him a lot of time because he has yeah. to enter that information to the system, right? Right. So, so that would go a bit on on the concept of of the um, the book of life or, or or the pages of life. Anybody should be able to to um, once you have your your uh, federation ID, you should be able to upload part of your clinical history. Uh, to Perfect. your to your GP. Okay, that answers it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I saw it. Vaccinations, diseases, exactly. Uh, that that would be part of the the citizen and and and, and patient portal that that you could also use. 
Great. So, Sophie, yeah, I guess I guess we are run of time. Um, does new health integrate with digital? Um, uh, you have different type of of, of authentication. Um, you can use uh, certificates, uh, or you can use password based, uh, and it really, really depends on the legislation of every country. But you know that's that's one of the beauties of of of, of Libre software. Right? Yeah, you can even be anonymous. I mean, that's in Argentina. I have treated people. Uh, that not necessarily need to give your information, uh, and that's 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 good. That's respecting uh, people's privacy. Uh, but I'm I'm a bit wary of you know other type of authentication that is by private companies. Uh, so uh, it should be a libre way of authenticating, as we do it today. But I guess we are running out of time. We can go to the chat room if you guys want and, and leave the others. Right, Doug? I think that we have a, we have a presentation now. No, no, no. Uh, you can uh, you can go on. There is a there is a break now. Oh, good. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let me just check. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is a break now. Yes, that's right. There is a break now, so you can go on discussing if you want. Oh, cool. So, so we have a, a you know a, a, some minutes to to talk and discuss uh, about the. the yeah, yeah, I mean, um, the thing with healthcare deals a lot with legislations. You know, current legislation. Some people say, well, you know, I I, I don't want to pass any of my information, or I want only this set of GPs um, to know about my clinical history. How can I do that? Um, in the um, hospital management information system, uh, it, it's very flexible, OK? We use uh, Triton uh, as part of the framework. And, and at that level, uh, you can pretty much set uh, uh, authentication and, and, and this sort of ACLs um, at, at the level of row at the level of field and also depending on what type of values do you have on that field uh, people should be able to uh, access it or not that's 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 doable the thing is uh, usually each country has its own set of rules when it comes to health data and uh, we pretty much have or whoever implements that GNU Health in that country has to abide by those rules. Okay. Um, uh, what what I like to see the scenario I like to see is, um, you know, I don't like, for example, to host uh, the federation in any private cloud servers. Uh, you know, whether it's Amazon or whether it's Google or whatever, um, because of because of the type of data that, is, you know, these guys live on data. And, and, and uh, we'd rather have our own cloud, if you will. Um, but it should be private, okay? It should be something that is part of, your health and your physicians and the system of health where you are. No private uh, company should be uh, even even hosting your information. Okay, but that's that's a personal uh, choice. At the end of the day, it's GNU Health. It's it's Libre software. You can put it wherever you want. But but it's important that you, we have that in mind. You know, um, at the end of the day, it's it's uh, it's health, right? And and it, it, the the weakest link will probably be there where you are actually hosting your data. Um, other than that, you can encrypt at different level. Uh, you can use different encryption mechanisms. Uh, 
it's 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 really uh, and libraries it's i'm using gnu pg and i'm using bcrypt bcrypt for for some stuff uh for hashing uh, but but if you want to use another library it's it's it's, uh, it's doable um the goal at the end the goal at the end on this is we want to have an ecosystem where uh, from the very uh, smallest uh, component which is the the, the citizen uh, going to family going to society uh we should be able to act in a, in a way that we can prevent that we are not doing reactive medicine as we are doing today in most of the countries and and the covid pandemic has been probably one of the best examples that have shown us that we are not doing good public health care at all uh, good public health care deals with prevention deals with keeping the people in a healthy state um, and not just curing them and not just you know people goes to the doctor when they feel sick and that's the wrong approach people should go to the doctor to keep them healthy um, because if you are sick something is wrong right something probably we should have done something better to prevent uh, getting sicker and again you know the way you eat the way you sleep the affection affection level that you have at home uh the, the 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 vaccination that those kids should have had that they didn't have probably is what they are making them sick um uh, you know there are so many things the education levels that that, that you have uh, the nutrition level all this stuff is in new health and then yes of course you have state of the art genomics uh, and, and and clinical genetics and so on but new health is about social medicine it's about primary care it's about uh, keeping a society healthy from all these socioeconomic determinants of health that are being ignored most of the times in many country uh, uh, you know people think oh well we have the the latest mris uh, and we have the the latest tomographers and yeah but those only uh, most of the time detect a cancer that might have been preventable if we did good preventive medicine if we did good um a public health program for health promotion and disease prevention and that's where i want to focus with new health and with the application that we have with my new health that i think that that is going to actually put the person on the driver's side right that's on the driver's seat that's that's he or she is going to be part of the system of health meaning now you are also responsible you are not only taking orders from your general practitioner but you are also going to be responsible for your health and um you know i'm i'm, I'm quite excited on, on on having this new application you you know that there are thousands of of e-health and, and, and mobile health applications out there but very few take this approach and and actually connecting it to the to the to the system or to the public health system in your country uh, i think it's going to make a a, a, a very important difference and uh, let's see how it's uh, taken by um by our uh, politicians you know that's that's one of the things that we have to do you know we um uh, i see that alex alexander is 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 here you know with this uh, this guys uh, at the free software foundation europe are doing a great campaign of uh, public money public code you know and, and that's what that's what we should talk to our politicians uh, and talk to them you know say hey you know why why don't you use libre software for healthcare um, what is stopping our countries to use free software or libre software in healthcare uh, 
you know it's it, the, the the tools are there you know and and if it's a it's a public good it's it's you know public healthcare should be universal and um, we are in europe and our politicians should uh, legislate to use uh, whether it's new health or whatever other uh, you know hospital management information system that they want to use as long as it's libre it's fine with me it's fine with me we are a social project you know we, we are a social project we are not into informatics we are into social medicines and we use uh you know we use uh, technology to deliver this uh social medicine let's see what Russ says uh, to most things i just had my to call my local government to tell them privacy policy third party saying we're using collect for, for more than yeah exactly you know it's 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 always the same we don't know what's going on when when they came uh with the covid uh application here at the beginning uh on on, on the phones uh, it was a closed source application and i started tweeting and calling and 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 and, and at the end now is it's uh, it's libre software it's, it's the code is there for the covid-19 mobile uh application you know and that that was good that was great you know but if we wouldn't have called them and tweet around uh that would have remained closed and you know i don't want an, a, a closed sourced application on my mobile phone especially on something so critical as as healthcare you know and, and that's why i i i want to move or I want to have these uh, applications on phones that I know every single line of code of the operating system. Or at least I have the choice to go to any single line of code of that operating system. And, and you cannot do that with Android. And of course, you cannot do that on iOS. So now with PinePhone, I think that uh we have a, a a very bright future you know we have to support this sort of of projects you know because that's the phone that i want to use on my daily basis uh you know i i feel very comfortable using you know uh, whether i'm using open on my laptop or or i'm using free bsd on some of my servers i want to do the same on my phone uh, and also in the next step is any single hardware device that is related to health should be open hardware i want to communicate to uh you know my pool oximeter with something that i know that is actually sending that information only to me same with all the glucometers you know i don't know what are those doing you know i, I want to have all the circuitry of that glucometer and all the uh, protocols should be open. So we can connect now the pine phone and my new health to the oximeter and to the glucometer and to the tensiometer. You know, that that's beautiful because if we do that, we are not going to be making mistakes uh, when we are punching in the blood glucose glucose level or your systolic or diastolic uh, uh, pressure you know um, if we have something that automates that and is open hardware then we have the whole circuit you know then then we close the whole thing and that's that's what we need to ask and and there are some some of them already um that are uh, open in that sense Oh, Windows XP? No, thanks. No. <laughs> Anything that is... Um, and, and and that's, you know, again, if you want to use it, it it's it's up to you. I mean, the, the, you can compile. I mean, it's, it's Python code. Chances are you, you should, with some degree of, of, of work, 
you should be able to run it on other non-free operating systems. Uh, but why? I think that we are also sending a message to our society, you know. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, it's 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 terrible, but that's what many, or I would say, that's what most of our governments are using today. They are using non libre operating system to run our health and to store our data. And, and I think that we have a moral issue with that. It's, it's, it's our moral duty to, to talk to our governments. And yeah, exactly. You know, that's what happened in the, you know, the, uh, I think it was like six, 15,000 records in the UK of people that was positive in COVID uh, on, on the SARS-CoV-2 were not entered because they were entering the information on an Excel spreadsheet. You know, it's, it's, it's appalling, you know, it's appalling. I mean, why doing so? Uh, it's 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 just crazy you know because at the end of the day um there are good politicians but there are also many ignorant politicians that are running our healthcare systems and you know it's 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 our moral duty to take them away from the society um because at the end healthcare is not much about technology but it's about good policies and good, um, you know, equity and, 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 and universality and, and good measures on that. Okay, Axel, after complaining about the use of prevalent, I got this reply. Oh. Yeah, sorry, that's in, uh, in German, but it just means um, in public uh, domains, People mostly really don't care about privacy or something like that. They say, uh, well, if they sign the contract and they say they are uh, sticking to the law, uh, then we're okay. But uh, that reminds me on another sentence in German, uh, keiner hat die Absicht, eine Mauer zu bauen. This is what the, uh, <laughs> uh, the leader of the former German Democratic Republic said, uh, we are not building a wall once they're starting to, uh, to build up the Berlin Wall, right? So um, we, we must raise much more the awareness in the public sector um, that uh, these proprietary vendors are not necessarily the place to hold our data. Yeah, I, and, and, and you know what, what uh, the guys at the FSFE are doing? I think that that's, that's a great campaign and I think that we should all support them. Absolutely. Uh, and, 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 and work with them. They, they, they have good experience, they have vast experience on talking to politicians and to the policy makers. And, and sometimes, sometimes politicians don't even know. Uh, you know, uh, so Gabriele, I made the Italian voiceover of the video. You know, public money, public code, I guess, right? Oh, oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I, that's that's a beautiful campaign, and and we should take it to all, to to our politicians, you know, and and set up a date with them and say, hey, listen to me, uh, like what what we did in in uh, Dusseldorf last time, Axel. You know, it's like give us fifteen minutes of your time, give us fifteen minutes, so so at least you get a grasp of the importance of libre software in the public administration, whether it is education, or whether it is healthcare, no matter what is public money, public code is so powerful campaign that we should be, you know, we should really, really endorse it. So um, guys, uh, if, if, you know, uh, if you have any questions, you can also ask Axel, by the way, he's, He's part of the uh, GNU Health 
project and uh, or, or to me or just join us at the uh, on the mailing list or under telegram we have a, a telegram channel too um, and we should we will have in november november 20 and 21st uh, we'll have the new health con right the uh, the uh, annual let me just put it here um conference uh, that, that we do uh, every year so uh, we'd love to have you to have you there and um, we should be by that time to to have something in in, in place some demos so we'll take the uh, the uh, pine phones and and play around with them so uh, it will be online of course because of this uh, context um but i think that uh, you know you, you of course will get a much better idea of, of the project itself not just on the mobile devices but its philosophy and, and what we are doing around the world with the presentation so um thank you again guys and um and and, and i'll see you very soon thank you thank you guys Thanks.